Chris, uh, which is a large library. Um, so uh, Dave Cheney, uh, one of the primary maintainers of Go, uh, he had, is very opinionated about logging, and I kind of agree with him. Um, it's important, uh, or it's hard, and you shouldn't have to choose between both. Uh, so this library kind of helps with a lot of that. All right, so a little bit about Logris. Um, it's structured and it's pluggable. Uh, and when I say pluggable, meaning you can actually replace it with the standard library uh, interface. It's super useful. Um, you can use it out of the box. It's not very hard to configure, things like that. Um, one of the biggest projects that it's in is libcontainer, which is the uh, base library for all um, kind of container interfaces for Docker and Rocket and things like that. Uh, so I find it all over the place. It's super cool. Uh, one of the cool things about Logris is it has what's called hooks. And what that means is you can log to a destination. So for example, um, if you want to log to Postgres from your application, you can actually do that by configuring a Postgres hook. Or if you wanted to log to Scribe or Influx or Kafka, things like that, it's very easy. You just configure a hook right off the bat, and then boom, you're logging to a destination without having to deal with all of these uh, APIs and things like that. It's very, very easy to use. Uh, so built in, it has some formatters. It has a JSON formatter um, and a text formatter. Uh, the text formatter is equals value, so it's still pretty straightforward. Um, but it's also very customizable in that it defines an interface for what a log entry should look like, and then you can customize it as much as you want. That's kind of where the hooks come into play, and how it's easier to uh, log to destinations. All right, so one of the cool features is it has level logging. So for you Java people, it'll be great. Um, so there was some discussion about adding trace level logging um, as a proposal, but the general idea is if you're trace logging, then there's a problem and you should probably look at that. Um, it does actually have one level logging. Raise your hand if you think one level logging is useful. Oh, there's always one. Sorry, man. Um, but uh, yeah, so some cool parts about it. Um, if you call the fatal interface, it just calls OSX at one, which is great when you don't actually want to panic. But if you need to panic, you can just all blocked on panic, and then, hey, we we'll panic, so it's up to you to handle that. All right, so it's actually really extendable, um, and then you can modify log entries on the fly, which, um, so this is a handle, uh, handler that I wrote for the demo. Uh, so if you look here, so locate actually calls um, one of the runtime uh, interfaces to get the file, as well as the line number for where uh, this action is occurring. There was a discussion to see if the Logris uh, library would add this functionality to the package. However, it was determined that it can be very slow to do this runtime introspection. So basically what we're doing here, uh, when we go to the log, and you can add contextual loggers, which I'll go to in a minute, um, we're adding the file name and the line number to this handler call, so that when we log it, we can say, okay, well, not only they come out on this handler, but they're looking for these specific parameters, which is um, a different aspect of whatever our program is doing. So it's very useful in that regard. Uh, one of my favorite features about this is that it's contextual. So you can pass around loggers with various contexts as you go along. Um, it's super useful for web servers, tools, things like that. Um, so for example, in the base logger, we're defining, all right, you always have to have a common field, and you should always have some extraneous field. And then when we go to pass this logger around, it will log with the common and the other keys. So it's very sweet, very wonderful. Um, and it's a logging library, so there's not a whole lot to talk about, um, because it's a logging library. So I'm not <laughs> sure about that. Um, there are a couple extra tools um, you can use for this. Uh, log format is one of them. If, I don't remember who it was, I'm sorry, but whoever talked about the Cobra command line, the same person that wrote that wrote a tool that uh, will allow you to configure Logris from the command line uh, with Cobra. So it's really cool. And then 
Um, Dave Cheney has a couple thoughts on how logging should be done, as well as exceptions and things like that. Um, and that's kind of about it. Are there any questions? Yes. So, um, some of the loggers out there in the languages have the ability to infer the actual valuation of parameters that chase the logger at the same time. So, the question was, I'm sure understand this, some logging packages have the ability to defer which part? The evaluation of the parameters. The evaluation of the parameters. I don't think this supports that, to be honest. So for the each of the hooks looked like they were all HTTP based. Uh, does that mean all it's doing is reaching out, making an HTTP request, and continuing on? Or that is an excellent question. I have not authored any of the hooks, so I don't okay. know what it's doing. Um, for things like Postgres, obviously it has to open a database connection. For things like Discord Risk, which for you in the Twitch sweater will probably be wonderful if you like home projects, you can log the Discord. So yes, at some point it does have to open an HTTP hook. So uh, that being said, I would very closely read the hooks documentation. Yes? So the context that passes around with the logger, is there any way to know what context you're going to have at any given point or check it? So the question was, uh, when you are passing around context, is there a way to track the context? Is that correct? So yes, you can tell it, hey, track this field. Um, and then, for example, you can also use the standard context object as well. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Okay. Anybody else? Cool. And that's it.